Welcome to our live, not live, but just streamed, Madden's worship service for July 5th, 2020. This is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. This is also, uh, as I said, July 5th, which is the day after July 4th, which is the day the United States celebrates its independence with our founding fathers, or some of them anyway, signing our Declaration of Independence. I'll mention that a little bit in the sermon. At any rate, we will be using Matins, and that can be found on page 219 of Lutheran Service Book, or you can just follow along on the slides that are here. Our opening hymn going to be Come Unto Me Ye Weary, which is Lutheran Service Book 684. Again, the words will appear on the screen, or you can look it up in your hymnal. So let us join together in worshiping our Lord Jesus.
Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us join in our psalm for the day. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on the wondrous work, your wondrous works, I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his mercy is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power. To make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord, the Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. Glory be to the, to the Father, Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. A reading from Zechariah, the ninth chapter. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the cherium from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope, Today I declare that I will restore to you double. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. O, o the, the depth, depth of the, the riches, riches and wisdom and knowledge of God, God. How, how unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. A reading from Romans, the seventh chapter. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. 
Alleluia. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Alleluia. A reading from Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding, and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to be by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and the one who knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. We now join in the common responsory, followed by the Apostles' Creed. Let us join in confessing our common Christian faith using the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Oh 
Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's message is taken from our Old Testament lesson. I read again Zechariah 9, verse 11. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Here ends the reading of our text. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. Amen. Yesterday, we celebrated in the United States, uh, in a self-quarantined way, our independence from England. The 4th of July is an important national holiday in the USA. In the past, communities held Independence Day parades. Businesses across the nation were closed. Churches were often filled with hymns themed around thanksgiving for our country and our land, like God bless our native land. People across the nation gathered in their backyards for barbecues and to watch firework displays. Yes, even, even the towns were decorated in red, white, and blue. This has been a big and fun day in the United States. It comes as no surprise, though, that people in churches in Canada, Mexico, Germany, India, Egypt, Australia, Zimbabwe, and so many other places let the day slip by without any fanfare at all. It is, after all, an American holiday. It isn't like Christmas or Easter, which is celebrated by all Christians around the world. As thankful as we are to the good Lord for our nation, for our freedom from, uh, from freedom from human tyranny, as our forefathers described the uh, government and the ruling of Britain at the time, it is, a, it is small potatoes compared to the freedom we have been given in Christ. The freedom we have received by Christ is freedom from the tyranny of sin, death, and the power of the devil. This is a freedom spoken of in all of our appointed lessons for today. First, to be set free, one must be held captive. All people, whether American or some other nationality, are born slaves to the unholy triumvirate of sin, death, and the devil. Scripture uses numerous synonyms for these prison guards. For example, our inborn sin is sometimes called our old man or our sinful Adam and so on. Death is sometimes presented in temporal terms and sometimes in eternal terms. The devil is our ancient foe. In one of Jesus' parables, he is depicted as a, a flock of birds that fly in and pluck up the seed of the word of God from our hearts. He is the great deceiver who presents righteousness as sin and sin as righteousness. He twists the good gifts of God into horrible masquerades of themselves. In today's sermon text, Zechariah wrote, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. The waterless pit is just another way of talking about hell. That waterless pit is what we need to be set free from. It is this eternal death that we are freed from, and that freedom is the cause of all the rejoicing mentioned in our Old Testament reading. Because Jesus, 
because of Jesus, we are no longer destined for hell. Paul, in our epistle lesson, speaks about how he was held captive to his old sinful nature, his inborn sinfulness. He shouts, though, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord, because he has been delivered from his old Adam, and by the, that was done by the atoning work of Jesus. In our gospel lesson, Jesus uh, says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is a description of all humanity, as all who labor and are heavy, uh, heavy laden are dis fitting a description of slaves, slaves to that unholy three again. Uh, we are held captive by our spiritual oppressors. But Jesus goes on to say that he will give us rest, which means he has set us free from our spiritual oppressors. So, let us take a moment today to consider what our readings tell us about this great freedom that Jesus has achieved for us. First, we need to understand that this spiritual freedom is a freedom from condemnation. We are free from the condemnation of the law due to our sins, for we, but we still continue to be sinners. So it's not a promise that in this life we're going to become sinless. It's not a promise that in this life we are going to be uh, free from being dogged by the devil. It's not a promise that in this life we are going to somehow be taken out of the sinful world and not have to face the temptations that that world brings. But it is a freedom from the condemnation that these things would bring upon us. Uh, <clears throat> this is what Paul, this struggle between our old nature and our new nature, is what Paul is writing about in our epistle lesson. Our struggle against sin every day of our lives remains very real. But Paul teaches us that through the waters of baptism, God creates in us a new man, a new nature, a new Adam, which is pure and sinless. That's right. Our new nature has no sin is never tempted. All temptation that comes to us is attacking us through our old nature, our sinful nature. Our old man, our sinful nature, though, was killed through the waters of baptism. God creates in us a new man, a new nature, a new Adam, which is pure and sinless. Our old man, our sinful nature, was killed and buried in baptism. So Paul wrote in Romans 6, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Nonetheless, Paul says that there is another law waging war in his body. It is a war between our old Adam and our new man, created in us through baptism. Our complete freedom from our old Adam. A freedom where he never again tempts us with the ways of the devil and the world, must wait until we enter eternity and dwell with Jesus and all the saints. However, our new nature, as I said, is already pure and desires to do what is right in the eyes of God. Thus we have within us a war. But thanks be to God, our sinful flesh has been defeated by Jesus Christ, who delivers us from our bodies of death. This is the gift he gives us through the waters of baptism. Through the sacra that sacrament, the Spirit creates faith in us, a faith in the atoning work of Jesus. For this victory, all God's saints bless him, as our psalm recorded and reminded us, we are transferred from the kingdom of slavery into the kingdom of his marvelous light, the kingdom of God, living under him in righteousness and purity forever. So our psalmist reminds us, he hears our cry and saves us. Again, the psalmist wrote, the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The love is good, Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he saves. 
Our reading from Zechariah says we rejoice in him, our gentle king, who comes righteous and having salvation. Zechariah reminds us, as for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I, set, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Jesus comes and speaks to our embattled hearts. And by his blood of the New Testament, he sets us free from the waterless pit, and he returns us to the stronghold of our baptism. Just so we are un absolutely clear, the blood of the New Testament is the blood the Son of God shed on the cross. That is the blood that sets us free from the power of the sinful three, eternal death, our sinful nature, and the devil. He is our freedom. Jesus speaks of this freedom when he calls to all who labor and are heavy laden. He calls us to himself and gives us rest to our souls through his free and full forgiveness. We receive this gift not because we are wise and understanding, but by the gracious will of the Father, the same God and Father whom Jesus chooses to reveal to us in love. Now, let us look a bit more closely at how this plays out in our reading from Zechariah. In verse 9, Zechariah teaches that the daughter of Zion and the daughter of Jerusalem are to rejoice greatly and sing aloud. This is a party. This is an Independence Day party par excellence. In the Old Testament, the word Zion is often a synonym for Jerusalem, and it is here. So these two daughters are one and the same. Jerusalem was the capital of the Old Testament nation of Judea, which uh, were the people selected to carry the promise of the Messiah. Using this understanding established, using the understanding that Paul established in Romans 4, we understand the words daughter of Zion and daughter of Jerusalem to represent those who are faithful to the promise of the Messiah. This is not a genetic thing. This is a faith thing. These are the people who believe in the coming Messiah. Today, of course, that would be all who continue to believe in the Messiah, who is Jesus. The rest of verse 9 describes Jesus as he arrives in the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. In verse 10, the Lord is depicted as cutting off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. Jerusalem here continues to have the same meaning that it had earlier, that is, the people of God who believe in the Messiah, a spiritual descendant of Abraham. Ephraim was the leading tribe of the Old Testament nation of Israel, which constituted or consi consisted of the ten tribes that broke away from Judea and established their own uh, independent kingdom. Once again, though, we have the words, uh, the two groups representing basically the same group of people, those who believe in the promised Messiah. The reason the chariots and the war horses are taken from these believers is because there is no longer any need for battle. There is no more wars they need to go out and meet. Christ has fought and won the victory for all believers over our ancient foes. Again, you know, sin, death, and the power of the devil. Christ has set those who believe in him free by the blood of his New Testament. Due to Christ's victory, over all our ancient foes, Zechariah depicts peace, not only in Ephraim and Jerusalem, but peace for all nature, nations, from sea to sea, from the Euphrates rivers to the end of the earth. The victory Christ has won is for all spiritual descendants of Abraham. No matter where or when they live, it is for all who believe in Messiah Jesus. Now, you may have noticed that uh, from time to time when I quote Z Zechariah, I'm saying blood of the Testament instead of blood of the covenant, as our ESV translation has it. Actually, both translations of the word are legitimate, but as this text is pointing forward 
to the blood of, that Christ will share on the cross, I feel that the better choice of translation is testament. And if I would ever be so foolish as to try to do my own translation of the Old Testament, then I would put testament here and not covenant. It also ties in very nicely, the word testament, with the Lord's Supper, when the blood of the New Testament, which Christ shed for us, is given to us for the forgiveness of our sins. This forgiving and restoring sacrament returns us then to our baptismal stronghold. Now, it has been quite a while, as uh, members of my church know, that we've been able to share the sacrament of Christ's uh, body and blood due to the novel coronavirus, which is still around and, in fact, having quite a resurgence today, isn't it? Uh, I just read in the paper the other day that America leads the world in deaths from COVID-19. Not exactly a category we want to lead the world in. But we will have an opportunity to share the Lord's Supper on Thursday, July 16th at 7 p.m. This will be an outdoor worship service. On this day and at this time, we will have a communion worship service on the grounds of our Redeemer Lutheran Church. During this service, we will obviously be celebrating the Lord's Supper. We do not want, uh, want uh, we do want to be sure huh, that we are ready for all who come. So if you're planning to come, it would be nice if you could RSVP either with an email to the church or just give us a call. That way we will know and be sure to have enough of our elements available, which are going to be individually wrapped. Zechariah finishes, I'm going to return to the text now. Zechariah finishes with the uh, lovely gospel promise. Today, I declare that I will restore to you double. What God mean, means here is that he has an overabundance of forgiveness for the repentant sinner. If your sins, your transgressions could be weighed and God's forgiveness, God's mercy could be weighed, then God's forgiveness and mercy would weigh twice as much as our sins and iniquities. If our sins and iniquities could be turned into a stack, a pile, a pillar, and God's forgiveness and mercy could be turned into this uh, a similar pillar, then the pillar of God's mercy and forgiveness would be twice as tall as the pillar of our sins and iniquities. God is simply saying that he has twice as much forgiveness as we have need. Whatever we have lost due to our sins, God returns in double portion. But for now, this weekend, when we in America remember our political freedom, let us also celebrate the greater freedom, the freedom from the consequences of the fall, freedom from the devil, freedom to live in harmony with God's will, freedom to dwell in the house of the Lord forever not just here and during our physical lifetime, but forever. That is to dwell with the Lord in heaven with all the saints for all eternity. This is a freedom as Christians that we can and should celebrate every day of our life. Amen. May God add his blessings to his word. Amen. Let us now join in the Te Deum, which is on page 223 of our hymnal.
Our Father, who Who art art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support amid the wearisome changes of this world, and at life's end, grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Merciful Lord, hear the prayers of your people and grant to us grace sufficient for our needs and all those for whom we pray. Our God and King, as once your people received you in joy, open our hearts to rejoice in your coming so that we may meet you in your word and sacrament for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith. Help us to bless and extol your name before the nations and declare your salvation to the generations to come, proclaiming that you are merciful and gracious and abounding in steadfast love. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. O merciful God and Lord, you are good to all your creation. Continue to bless your church and to provide for her faithful pastors who will preach and teach your word and church workers who will serve us in your name. We especially remember today the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Ingria in Russia and our ministers, especially Reverend Ari Kugapi, their bishop. Make bold your church's witness before the nations and help us to act in love towards our neighbors. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. Our Creator and Lord, from you all things come and to you are all things directed. Provide for our nation faithful leaders who will hear and heed your law, protect and defend the citizens, Preserve the precious gift of liberty and inspire us to use our freedom honorably. Make us mindful of the heritage of our forebears that our forebears have given to this land and guide us to be faithful in our stewardship of all our resources which you have provided. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. Our wise and giving God, you are the God of truth and in you there is no falsehood or deception. Help us to delight in your law, to love what is good and true and right, and to seek after these things. Help us to wage war against the old Adam within us. Restore us when we stray from your word, and forgive us when we give end to the devil and his temptations. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. Our compassionate Lord, we do not suffer alone the pain and afflictions of this life, but we live them out within your grace and are sustained by your mercy. Hear us on behalf of the sick, those who suffer, the grieving, and those who mourn, death mourn, and those for whom death is near, including those we now name in our hearts. According to your will, deliver them from their affliction and give to all your strength, patience, and hope that they may endure their afflictions and give uh, and be, and endure unto eternal life. Show compassion and drive all pestilence from our land. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. Our loving Father, you have hidden your greatness from our wisdom and made your ways known to children. Guide us to bring our children to the waters of baptism, to raise them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord, and to know perfect rest and peace within your loving arms. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. O gentle God and Lord, 
you have invited us to come to you with the heavy burdens of this life, that we may find rest and peace in your mercy. Grant relief to those who struggle, supply to those in need, hope to those who fear, and peace to those who are anxious, that we may be delivered from all adversity and brought to everlasting life, where we shall join the saints of old in your presence forevermore. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. O God of our freedom, as we have just celebrated our nation's independence, grant that we do not use our freedom to oppress others, but rather to view all others as people whom you love, and by doing so, bring peace and concord to our nation. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. O Lord, who brings eternal health, Grant to all medical and emergency workers protection from the coronavirus and guide all who are working on a cure or vaccine uh, that might prevent COVID-19. Your guidance to lead them to success so that we and all people may praise you for your mercy. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. All these things, blessed Lord, we pray you to grant us according to your merciful goodness and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join in the Collect for Grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Our final hymn today is If God Himself Before Me, hymn 724, and we're going to use verses 6 through 10. 6 through 10.
Live in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us today for this Hour with the Lord. Just a quick reminder, on Wednesday, we have our live-streamed Romans Bible study, and we're just beginning chapter 5. That begins at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard, uh, on Easter Daylight Savings Time for the United States, obviously. Also, don't forget, uh, July 16th at 7 p.m., we will have a outdoor communion worship service at our Redeemer Lutheran Church. This service will not be streamed. So you're there. We're delighted. If you're not, we're sorry. But we just don't have the ability to do this sort of thing at our church yet. Have a blessed day, a rest of your 4th of July weekend. God bless you. Bye-bye.